Kyle H. Rittenhouse not guilty. We don't hear about most trials that happen, but occasionally one becomes front page news, either because of the crime that was committed or the fame of the people involved. Today, we'll be taking a look at 15 of the most high profile court verdicts in history. Number 15, Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. April of 2022 saw the beginning of what'll likely be the celebrity trial of the decade between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. He had taken action against his ex-wife for what he claimed was a series of defamatory statements about his behavior during their short marriage, statements that had a huge impact on his acting career. Similarly, Amber Heard filed a counterclaim for defamatory statements made by Depp's team that also affected her employability. What came next was six weeks of fascinating testimony and evidence that was live streamed to the world. Almost like a movie playing out, there were heroes and villains. And there's no doubt that in the public perception at least, there was a desire to see Johnny Depp being vindicated in his denial of the claims against him that would see him star on the big screen once more. These hopes became a reality in June of 2022, when the jury's verdict was finally read out. They found Amber Heard liable for three out of three counts of defamation, and that Johnny Depp was liable for one of the three counts he was being accused of. They awarded him a payout of $10 million in compensatory damages, and the Virginia state limit of $350,000 in punitive damages, while Heard was awarded $2 million in compensatory damages. But the outright winner was clearly Depp, who in the court of public opinion at least, cleared his name and will likely be the hottest property in Hollywood for the coming years. Number 14, Timothy McVeigh. In April of 1995, the worst case of terrorism in the United States at the time took place in Oklahoma City. Two right-wing white supremacists parked a rider rental truck that was laden with explosives in front of the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building and detonated it. At least 168 people were killed, more than 680 were injured, and the blast damaged 300 other buildings within a 16-block radius. Timothy McVeigh, who was 27 at the time, was arrested soon after and found to be the main instigator of the attack. After a huge investigation, the eyes of the world were watching when his trial began in 1997. His argument was that he acted out of necessity to prevent another situation like the Waco siege from taking place again. And as part of the trial, his defense team even showed clips from a documentary about Waco. There was no doubt that he was guilty though, and he didn't even deny his actions. So when the jury returned a verdict of guilty on all 11 counts of the federal indictment, it was seen as a legal system working exactly as it should. On June 13, 1997, the punishment was decided upon, and McVeigh was given the death penalty. The case was so high profile that he wasn't on death row as long as most other convicts. It would only be there for two days less than four years, as he was executed by lethal injection on June 11, 2001, at the Terre Haute Federal Prison at the age of just 33. Number 13, the college admissions bribery scandal. For those who chose to pursue further education beyond high school, one of the basic principles is that you're able to access opportunities through hard work and ability. Beyond the question of whether you can actually afford the tuition fees, it should be a case of getting the best grades to land a spot on the most sought after course. But in 2019, it emerged that there was another way. The college admissions bribery scandal exposed a scheme that had been run by William Rick Singer and saw him take more than $25 million in bribes from 33 parents of college applicants to get their children into their chosen course by using the money to alter test scores and influence college officials. With the potential for huge prison terms and fines, many of the families involved were extremely wealthy or famous and had used these positions of power to give opportunities to their children that weren't available to others. The most famous person involved was Laurie Laughlin, who had been a star in Full House and various other shows. After entering a plea of not guilty, she was sentenced to two months in jail and fined $150,000, which was about in line with the punishments handed out to the 37 others that have so far been prosecuted. Number 12, Derek Chauvin. There are very few events that truly shake the world, but the unforgivable actions of Derek Chauvin and three other officers on May 25, 2020, when they arrested George Floyd, were undoubtedly one of them. Chauvin had held Floyd on the ground with his knee on his neck for at least nine minutes, and despite pleas from Floyd who said he couldn't breathe, no one stepped in to help. 
Floyd then went quiet and motionless and had died because of his treatment, something that led to uproar in countries around the world and one of the most high-profile court cases of recent times. Chauvin was charged with second-degree unintentional murder, third-degree murder, and second-degree manslaughter, something many believe only happened because of the extreme public outpouring of grief and anger. Most of the trial was televised, and Chauvin came across as a cold, emotionless person who had a history of questionable behavior while he was an officer. Despite claims that he had been treated leniently with what he was charged for, the jury returned a verdict of guilty on all counts, and on June 25, 2021, he was sentenced to 22 and a half years in prison, with the chance of parole after 15 years. Now held at the Oak Park Heights Correctional Facility, he's apparently in solitary confinement for 23 hours a day because of the risk that other inmates will attack him. Number 11. Enron with supposed annual revenues exceeding $101 billion, announced as the most innovative company in America for six years in a row by Fortune magazine, employing more than 20,000 staff and a main player in the energy industry across the United States, it seemed as if Enron could do no wrong. But in 2001, everything came tumbling down. It emerged that in order to attract investment, the company had long been fraudulently reporting its financials in an effort to hide billions of dollars worth of losses on failed deals and projects. When this came out, the share price plummeted and the company was forced to declare bankruptcy. Shareholders lost out hugely in the scandal and began a $40 billion lawsuit against Enron, and this led to the prosecution of both Kenneth Lay, who was the chairman and CEO of the company, and Jeffrey Skilling, who was the former CEO and COO. At the time, it was the largest corporate collapse in United States history, and because this happened on purposeful, illegal actions by those in charge, the result of these cases were eagerly followed. Ultimately, Skilling was found guilty of 19 out of 28 counts of securities and wire fraud and was sentenced to 24 years and four months in prison, as well as being handed a $180 million fine. Lay was also found guilty of the six counts he was accused of, but died of a heart attack before sentencing, so his conviction was vacated. Number 10. Kyle Rittenhouse in August of 2020, protests had broken out across Kenosha, Wisconsin, following the shooting of an African-American man by police officers. To begin with, things were peaceful, but the event had attracted Kyle Rittenhouse, a 17-year-old from Antioch, Illinois, who had decided to drive to the town with an AR-15-style rifle to, he claimed, help local business owners protect their property. Following a series of events, Rittenhouse used his weapon to kill two people and seriously injure another, and he was charged with two counts of murder, one of attempted murder, one of unlawful possession of a firearm, and one curfew violation. The argument by Rittenhouse's legal team was that he had acted in self-defense, and this became a nationally watched trial because of the conflicting opinions of those who believed this was an outrageous killing spree, and those who felt he was exercising his rights as set out in the Constitution. When the jury returned, the stunning result was that Rittenhouse had been found not guilty on all counts, and he was released back to his normal life straight away. Number 9. Britney Spears She was the most famous pop star on the planet, but after reaching the pinnacle of the industry at the age of 18, the immense pressure started to take its toll on Britney Spears. After releasing two of the best-selling albums of all time, she started behaving in ways that many saw as being erratic, and this resulted in her being put under a conservatorship in 2008 that was led by her father. In the following years, she would continue to perform and attend events, but she had very little control over her life and her finances, and this came to a head in 2019, following huge fan and public pressure for the terms of the conservatorship arrangement to be revisited. The hashtag Free Britney campaign petitioned all of those involved in the process, and this ended in the termination of her restrictions in late 2021 and the return of full control over her life to Spears. On the face of it, this seems like an outstanding victory that gave freedom back to one of the planet's greatest pop stars. But in the time since, concern has begun to grow for her once more. Some of her actions have been seen by some as reminiscent of the times when she was struggling the most and could well be a sign that she has actually been benefiting from some of the terms of the conservatorship. Number 8. Whitey Bulger 
James Joseph Whitey Bulger was the head of the Winter Hill Gang in the Winter Hill neighborhood of Somerville, Massachusetts, who was also reportedly an FBI informant who gave details on his rivals in exchange for them overlooking his own misdeeds. Things turned against him, though, and he went into hiding in 1994, and when further information came to light, he was added to the FBI Top 10 Most Wanted list in 1999. Finally, when he was 81, Bulger was traced and arrested in Santa Monica, California in 2011, and he was soon put on trial for 32 counts of racketeering, money laundering, extortion, various weapons charges, and the complicity in 19 murders. Needless to say, the connection with the mob and the severity of these crimes led to this being an extremely high-profile case, one that resulted in the jury finding him guilty on 31 counts. He received two consecutive life sentences, with a further five years added on top. But this all came to an abrupt end in 2018 after he was transferred to a new facility, and he was beaten to death by fellow inmates. Number 7. Casey Anthony In July of 2008, Cindy Anthony made a 911 call to report her granddaughter as missing, and this led to the uncovering of a terrible tale in which the child's mother, Casey Anthony, had told lie after lie to deflect from the truth that she had murdered the girl in a brutal fashion. It was so horrific that it was immediately headline news across the globe, and the trial, which took place in May and July of 2011, was covered 24-7. Casey Anthony was charged with first-degree murder, to which she pled not guilty, but the prosecution pursued the death penalty because they claimed she had used chloroform to incapacitate her daughter and then covered her nose and mouth with duct tape. Described by Time Magazine as the social media trial of the century, most people were convinced of her guilt, so they were in for a huge shock when the jury returned the verdict. She was found not guilty on the main counts, and only guilty of four misdemeanor counts of providing false information to officers, two of which were overturned in an appeal two years later. To this day, no one knows for sure what happened to the poor girl, and Casey remains a free woman. Number 6. Michael Jackson Undoubtedly known as one of the most influential entertainers of the 20th century and one of the most successful artists of all time, Michael Jackson first gained recognition as a member of the Jackson 5 with his siblings. As he went on to develop a solo career, his bizarre antics led to a number of accusations of abhorrent behavior. This led to him being charged by Santa Barbara authorities in 2003. Denying all the charges, he was found not guilty on all accounts by mid-2005, but this wasn't the most controversial court case involving the star. The world was stunned in June of 2009, just weeks before a huge tour was to begin, when news emerged of Jackson's death. Investigations found unusual levels of general anesthetic in his system, and a trial that began in September of 2011, his personal physician Conrad Murray was charged with involuntary manslaughter. Later that year, he was found guilty on all charges and sentenced to four years in prison, leaving people to wonder just what Michael Jackson would have gone on to do had his doctor not made such a mistake on that fateful night. Number 5. George Zimmerman In 2012, George Zimmerman was a neighborhood watch coordinator in his gated community in Sanford, Florida. It was a place that often experienced trouble, and countless calls had been made to the police in previous months, a fact that Zimmerman claimed had made him anxious for his own safety on several occasions. On the evening of February 26th, this mindset resulted in tragedy when he became involved in an altercation with 17-year-old Trayvon Martin, who he believed to be a thief, and shot him near the house where Martin had been staying. There was outcry in the local community for what had happened, and initially police didn't arrest Zimmerman because they accepted his claim of self-defense. Following widespread condemnation of this decision and increasing publicity over the incident, police finally agreed to investigate, and Zimmerman was charged with second-degree murder. Deliberations took less than a day after the trial concluded, and the jury returned a verdict of not guilty on the murder charge, and also for the lesser offense of manslaughter, upholding the controversial Stand Your Ground laws. Whether this was fair or not is a question that'll continue to be asked for years to come, but it's generally accepted that this was a correct application of the law as it currently stands, something that apparently caused a number of the jury members to cry as they realized they couldn't convict him for anything. Number 4. Wagatha Christie 
the wives and girlfriends of sports stars in the UK are traditionally called wags, and they tend to feature in gossip columns and the tabloid newspapers just as much as their highly paid husbands. This led to a rather unusual court case in 2022 for something that was dubbed Wagatha Christie because of the super sleuthing that had taken place. Colleen Rooney, the wife of former England soccer captain Wayne Rooney, had become concerned that private stories about her and her family were being leaked to the newspapers. She created false posts on Instagram that were only shown to certain people and concluded that the source of the leak was Rebecca Vardy, the wife of another famous soccer player, Jamie Vardy. Vardy took Rooney to court for defamation, and what followed was a sordid trial full of intimate details of former partners, claims that phones with evidence that had been accidentally dropped into the ocean during a boat trip, and a number of highly embarrassing insights into the lives of some of the most famous and wealthy sporting families in the country. The papers and the nation were gripped by the stories, which all seemed to point to the fact that Vardy was indeed responsible for the leaks not necessarily by spreading the stories to the media herself, but by failing to make adequate security measures that allowed people working for her to access her personal accounts. Number 3. Ted Bundy Ted Bundy was one of the most notorious serial killers in American history, having murdered an unknown number of young women and girls during the 1970s. He was in his 30s when he carried out some of the most depraved and violent acts on records, and the truth only began to come to light when he was arrested in Utah for kidnapping in 1975. Investigators began to link him to other crimes, and after being imprisoned in Utah for kidnapping, he escaped and committed some horrific crimes in a sorority house in Florida. He was arrested and charged with homicides and assaults, and with 250 reporters turning up to the court to witness proceedings in June of 1979, he chose to represent himself. It was the first time the country truly got a chance to look into the eyes of such a dangerous man, and after being found guilty, he was sentenced to death. Over the following year, he was given a further two death sentences for other crimes, and before being executed by electrocution in January of 1989, he admitted to 30 murders across seven states, although the true number is believed to be much higher. Number 2. Oscar Pistorius Oscar Pistorius was once one of the most famous sports stars on the planet. Born with a congenital defect, both of his feet were amputated when he was just 11 months old. But this didn't stop him from becoming a sprinter in Paralympic and Olympic events thanks to the use of prosthetics. Known as the Blade Runner, he went from strength to strength in public life. But behind closed doors, things were very different. On Valentine's Day in 2013, he fired a gun through the bathroom door in his apartment, supposedly thinking there was an intruder in there but actually shot his girlfriend, Riva Steenkamp, who died almost instantly. His murder trial began the following year in March of 2014 and stated how anxious he was because of the loss of his feet and that he was always in fear for his life by intruders. He admitted to firing the shots, but claimed he believed it was an intruder, and this claim, along with his fame, meant that the trial was closely watched by people across the world. On September 12th, the jury returned a guilty verdict for culpable homicide and reckless endangerment in regards to a firearm incident at a restaurant, and he was sentenced to five years in prison, a figure that was later increased by the appeals court and meant that he wouldn't be eligible for parole until 2023. Number 1. O.J. Simpson Despite taking place in 1994 and 1995, the trial of O.J. Simpson, which was called the trial of the century at the time, is still one of the most famous and talked about verdicts ever. In June of 1994, Nicole Brown Simpson, his wife, and Ron Goldman were both found stabbed to death outside of her condo in the Brentwood area of Los Angeles. Coverage of that year's NBA Finals was interrupted to broadcast live footage of the pursuit of the vehicle O.J. Simpson was in, with officers trying to arrest him, and his trial on suspicion of murder was one of the first to be fully broadcast in public. Thought to have had a hundred million people tuning in at the time of the announcement of the verdict, the jury returned with a not guilty verdict for both charges of murder, and he was free. Since then, no further arrests have been made in regards to the murders, and the nation is still torn as to whether he's guilty or innocent for the crimes, with recent polls suggesting the majority of people do believe that he killed them. A later trial in 1997 found him liable for the wrongful death and battery of Goldman and Brown, 
which led to him being ordered to pay $33 million in damages, a sum he reportedly still is yet to fully pay off. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.